Um, I'm going to move on to introduce our, our next speaker tonight. Um, she is Julie Venters Christian. She, she is the head of global patient advocacy um, for gene therapy, R&D, and, in the, and rare disease. So it's the gene therapy, R&D, and rare disease unit, that is, at, at GlaxoSmithKline. And uh, Julie is uh, also one of the co-chairs of our newly formed um, patient advocacy um, coordination committee. And she's been a tremendous resource for us. Uh, she has a lot of experience with the patient advocacy community, really over, I guess, 20 or 21 years or so, um, which stems from her personal experience um, having a child with a rare disorder. And I think she's going to talk about some of her personal experiences tonight. So Julie. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me here this evening. I wanted to spend a couple of minutes to talk about my journey and really how I got from being a, a mom in Michigan, uh, knowing nothing about medicine, to really medicine being the center of my life, and ultimately coming to GSK and coming to industry. So you may see these beautiful pictures uh, on the slides. That's my daughter, Brielle, and I actually have five children. Uh, Brielle is my third child. I have kids from age four all the way up to 28, so I'm a little bit crazy, too. Um, but I want to really talk about the diagnosis and some things that happen even before the diagnosis, and I think it might be of interest to you in, in, in your work. So when I was pregnant with Brielle, I already had two rambunctious sons who were very active in utero, and I specifically remember reading a book called The Kennedy Women, and worrying that I could not feel Brielle kicking in utero. And um, concerned me, I would talk to uh, my doctors about it. Everybody said, ultrasound looks great, no worries. So what's really interesting is remember that I'm reading The Kennedy Women, because that'll come up in, in a few minutes. Um, and I was really inspired by the book, The Kennedy Women. I really you know, was not into politics at the time. Of course, knew about President Kennedy but um, was inspired by Eunice Kennedy Shriver and her work in the Special Olympics, regardless of what your politics were. She really enthused me as I was reading this, this story. Didn't know that I had a child with severe disabilities that, that was growing inside of me. Um, so fast forward, Brielle is born. She's nine pounds and very healthy looking, rosy cheeks. Um, and she slept all the way through the night, the first night in the hospital. And I had that sick feeling like, what is going on? Why is she so sleepy? Nurses are like, you just don't know. You've, you've had two rambunctious boys. Girls are so different. So this would be the story for the next three, four months. I would take Brielle to the pediatrician. She was always sleeping. And um, they just said, baby, sleep. I said, I know. I have two boys. But uh, they said, don't worry about it. So at about two months, Brielle started throwing up constantly. And again, pediatrician said, you're really getting a little bit obnoxious, Julie. She, kids throw up. And, um, you know, I was very persistent. And again, she started not going through the normal milestones that my other boys did. But I wasn't being listened to. And I began to just think, okay, maybe I am a little crazy. Um, I, I'm not being believed and her checkups seem fine, uh, according to the doctor. Wouldn't you know, at about four and a half months, um, I was sitting having some coffee with one of my, my friends, and her husband was a pediatric surgeon in his final year of residency at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, and he was giving a big presentation that evening, and he had forgotten his briefcase. And they had two boys, and I have Brielle uh, in my arms, and Jim comes home running, rushing to get his briefcase for his presentation, and across the room we're sitting, and and he looks at Brielle a little bit funny, and he comes over a little closer. And she had her head cocked a little bit like this as I was holding her. And Jim said, you know, I've always wanted a little girl. Will you let me just take her for a quick little walk? And in my mind, I knew he was examining her. And he came back about 10 minutes later, and he said, I want you to come to the University of Michigan with me right now. He said, I've already called neurology. And if you don't come with me now, it's going to take you months to get in. So I went with Jim, and Brielle was admitted that day. She had a muscle biopsy the next week, and she had some type of mitochondrial disease. And 
you know, this is the time when they didn't know whether to have a fresh biopsy, a frozen biopsy. Um, she didn't have any of the known mutations, but she definitely had red, ragged red fibers. She had MELOS type symptoms, and it didn't it didn't look good. So the pediatric neurologist, great great guy, and he basically said, "What took you so long?" And you know, these are kind of some of the things that parents go through. It's like you 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 have these instincts that then people don't listen to you, and this pediatric neurologist, I've seen him since, and he's a great guy, and, and he'll always say, I'm so glad that, that everything is working out okay, and so it's fun to see these people later on. But he said, uh, Brielle is not going to live past a year. He said, I, I, I give her a couple of months because um, she had carnitine deficiency, lactic acidosis, very serious. And I went home during this time, and I really... Um, didn't know what to do with myself. You know, I, I was devastated. I cried. I, um, you know, kind of sat in the room for two weeks doing nothing. And what finally got, got me out of bed and interested was thinking about starting a, a support group. So uh, Brielle's metabolic specialist is Dr. Jess Taney. You may have heard of him. He founded the Cure for Cystinosis. And uh, he happened to be at the University of Michigan at the time. And he was also chair of the National Organization of Rare Disorders at that time. And it just so happened that um, I, when I went to visit him, he said, there's a NORD conference coming up in Dallas, Texas, and I want you to bring Brielle. And he said, the, the brochure says no kids allowed, but you tell them that, that Dr. Taney said Brielle can come. So there at the Nord um, conference, I met other families that had other dif different rare diseases, and I decided to start a um, mitochondrial foundation called JUMP, Juvenile Unknown Mitochondrial Problems, and really learned so much about what other parents are going through in that process. Um, that journey actually led me to meeting Greg LeMond, who was the Tour de France winner from the United States that won three times. And he had a mild adult onset mitochondrial disorder. Um, and so he ended up being the national spokesperson for the organization I started. And we did a lot of cycling events in Michigan and raised some money for the University of Michigan for mitochondrial disease research. Um, so flash forward, I went from there to working for a magazine called Exceptional Parent. I was the editor uh, that was outside of New York City. And it was a magazine that served physicians, healthcare professionals, and parents that were caring for children with disabilities. And in my, my time there, I, I really interviewed families, healthcare systems, hospitals, um, schools, best practices for raising children with disabilities. And so I ended up hearing about a fellowship that Eunice Kennedy Shriver offered every year. Um, and it was called the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Fellowship. And it was based in Washington, D.C., and I really thought that would be so interesting. And many of you probably know Steve Groft in the room. Um, I had met him a few times at, at the Nord meetings. In fact, Brielle cried through it, one of his presentations at that first meeting, and he thanked her and said, it, obviously, it's time for me to stop talking. Um, so Steve was the first person that kind of sponsored me, wrote a letter to Eunice Kennedy Shriver and said, I think Julie... Um, would be, be good to represent people with disabilities on Capitol Hill. And so it was a bipartisan uh, fellowship, um, and I was chosen by Senator Jay Rockefeller, Democrat, West Virginia, since retired, uh, to work on health and disability policy. So I was going through a divorce, which is very common in families, um, you know, very stressful time um, in general, just raising a child with a disability. Um, so I came here as a single parent in the year 2000 to Washington, D.C., and I ended up meeting with Eunice Kennedy Shriver, and um, I told her that while I was pregnant, I was reading the book, The Kennedy uh, Women, and she said, that's so interesting. She said, well, what did you learn? And, and I told her you know, that I learned how important it was to just let the kids run and play and be active. And she said, well, would you like to um, start coming over to my pool and I'll bring over some Special Olympics coaches to teach Brielle how to swim. So I really got to know the family. And again, whether you're Republican or Democrat, they were an amazing family for, for children with disabilities. And one day, um, when it was August, and her son Mark Shriver was actually running for the House seat in Montgomery County, and I was helping out with his campaign. This was after my fellowship. 
and uh, everybody was on vacation. It was August, and I was there with Brielle and the, and the swim coaches. And she said, I've, um, can, you, can you just um, look up at me? And I'm up on the balcony, and I'm going to come down with someone very special in a few minutes. So I looked up, and down came a woman, an older woman in a wheelchair, and it was Rosemary, her sister. And it was one of the most uh, magical experiences to me because the sun was setting, and it was just Eunice and Rosemary and Brielle and I in the pool, and the coaches had left, and Rosemary was, looked amazingly young for her age, um, and she loved Brielle's hair, and she patted her hair, and I just thought, how many people get to meet their mentor um, and why they started what they're doing? And, and here, Rosemary had inspired Eunice to start Special Olympics, and my daughter had inspired me to start my foundation. And so it was a learning to me that um, along the way of this journey, I've met so many incredible people. Um, it, it does take a village. You hear about all of that. Um, I then went on to work uh, for the Lupus Foundation of America and the Epilepsy Foundation. I stayed in D.C. Um, I was the vice president of government relations for the Lupus Foundation and really you know, learned about that disease and all the policies that are important, as well as for epilepsy, which my daughter also has epilepsy. And along the way, you know, I, I, I realized that this journey is so difficult and that every age that your child goes through is a different joy and a different struggle. You know, we all, many of us have typically developing kids and we think that's hard enough. But when you're constantly fighting the school system for inclusion, for special services, it's, it's really a full-time job. So everything that all of you are doing in this, if you work for industry or if you work for a nonprofit, it's so important to think about the family. Um, you know, I think pharmaceutical companies say we're focused on the patient, but we also need to focus on the family and their journey. Um, about six years ago, I was approached by GSK to work in their U.S. advocacy department uh, for rare diseases, immunology, and for neurosciences. So it was, it was really a great experience. And about seven months ago, um, I was offered this position, which is a global position, um, and that is to lead and head their um, patient advocacy for gene therapy. And it's been fascinating to me because Sven Keeley, many of you probably know him, and Martin Andrews, my, my management, really said, we want you to have this position to share what the family experience is, to go out and identify with the patient groups that you're working with, um, to understand their journey, and to talk to us internally about your journey and about what you're hearing from others. What are the insights that you're learning? So we've been working a lot on doing patient insight seminars internally for you know our 90,000 uh, worldwide employees. And I try and interview some of the, the patient groups and so that our, our internal employees can understand the great work that the patient groups are doing and that the family experiences. One of the other things I'd like to work on with GSK is, again, this is a family disease that we're in, you know, genetics. The genetic disorders are so tough because we see families that not only have one child but have two, three, four children. And I know in my, myself, uh, in my family, you know, you look back at some of the things like the sudden infant death syndrome and it all makes sense. And there's a lot of guilt that comes with having a genetic disease and not knowing yourself until your child is born. And then, you know, you have to deal with that as a family disease. Will your children be carriers? Um, and you think about all the caregiving issues that they go through. So I really just wanted to bring a little bit of insight on what I've learned. I've been really appreciative of GSK allowing me to be me and to learn from all of you and to learn from the patients and the families, most importantly. So thank you.